Across the board version of Name That Tune, and he happens to be a very close pal of mine. I want you to give him a warm welcome. Here is Dennis James. <laughs> Chairs hold up. Yeah. Well, okay. Peter Marshall had a little trouble with that. Uh, <laughs> Did you hear about that? Yeah. That's why I was afraid to sit down. Dennis, how many people know that you're really Italian? Well, I hope everybody, because I keep talking about Do it you? all the time. Because we had a lot of Italian people. We have Carol Lawrence, we have Jimmy Coco on the show today. The only reason I don't use an Italian name on the air, I don't know if I told you that story. The real name is Demi Spose. Right. right. And I worked for a guy, Frank Sinatra and I worked for the same station. And a guy named Paul Esteo was the station manager. Call me down. He said, change your name, you're fired. Said the same thing to Sinatra. Sinatra, he had talent. He wouldn't change his name. I changed. <laughs> I'm Dennis James. And that's how it happened. You've been a host now for how many years? Longer than anybody I know, really. How many years, Dennis? Well, since 1938. I don't know. I'm not going to figure out the years. 30, 36 <laughs> years? Are you kidding me? Oh, that great? Thank you. Yeah, I... The reason I started, I, when I was a kid, I used to watch you, and I figured I'd better get into this business. <laughs> What were some of the shows? What, what's the first thing you did on television? The first, I did two actually. Uh, a thing called The Television Roof, which was a variety show. See, I was a disc jockey, and it was an entertainment show. And I'd say, look, nobody's going to see you on television anyhow. Come and join me. Yeah. So we'd do uh, entertainment, you know, songs, dances, everything else, and I emceed it. Another one was called uh, The Dennis James Sports Parade. It was a 15-minute show, and I would interview a sports luminary for five minutes, and then for 10 minutes, I would partake of the sport. If you were a boxer, I'd box him. If you were a wrestler, I'd wrestle him. If you were a fencer, I'd fence him. All bad, but I would do it with him, see? That's the one. And those were the first two ever. Now, how many sets? Do you have any idea how many sets were in use when you were doing those? Yeah, we know exactly. There were about 300 sets, and 200 of them weren't working, really. <laughs> because they were changing. It was all experimental. The station was W2XWV out of New York. And my brother, Lou, was with Dr. Dumont. And they wanted to start television. And he said, I got a kid brother who's in radio. Maybe he'll help us. And that's how it all began for me. Now, I know that you were responsible for about 25 television firsts, like the first daytime game show. He hosted, right, right Dennis? What was it called? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you started. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was called a, a beep stakes. Beep Yeah, stakes? like a car. You know, we had people in cars that raced across the country, and they would beep the horn and uh, answer the question to move across the country. And then the thing that was... Beep stakes. <laughs> Stop to come back, don't you? <laughs> then they've gone and gotten some of the old ones that were successful and brought them back. And then the thing I did uh, a little bit later on was cash and carry, where it was almost like a truth of consequences would yeah. be today, you know. Uh, yeah. If you answered the question, you would get the cash. If you didn't, boy, you'd have to carry the consequences, you know, that sort of thing. And Dennis was also the first commercial television announcer. Do you remember your product, your first product? Yeah, that was very interesting. See, I told you it was all experimental, Mike. Right. And uh, nobody was knew anything about television. And for instance, uh, the networks didn't have any live television. And the third network, I won't even mention its name, because you have, you're on the I'm ABC. Like, oh, oh, yeah. uh, they would use the facilities of Dumont just for their directors and producers to learn something about this medium. And no advertisers. They gave the time away. And the first thing we ever did was for Wedgwood, China. And that was right after the war. And I played a GI who had just come back and was explaining how Wedgwood China was made. And it was a full half-hour commercial. A half, 30 minute commercial? 30 minutes. That was before the, the you know, rules. No, as I say, there were no such yeah. things yeah. as rules for it. You also did wrestling. And I'm told that when, when you were called upon to do that, that you didn't know a thing, not a living, breathing thing about wrestling. I came out of the service, and the first job I got was prosecuting attorney on famous jury trials. I don't know if you remember that. And then they asked me if I would do wrestling. And I said, I've never seen a wrestling match. So they said, we're going to do it anyhow. So I bought a book. And I'm looking up at the wrestlers, and I go like this, and I say, Mother, that's a hammerlock. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I beamed every comment to Mother, because I figured all the guys sitting in a bar, they would know more about it than I knew. And a lot of them and would said, care gonna... less right. if they're sitting in a bar anyway. Yeah. But uh, anyhow, and the outgrowth of that came OK Mother, because this wrestling was, went very successfully, finally went network and uh, got an Emmy, you know. Tell about the sound effects, how you used to dramatize the matches. Well, somebody brought some sound effects, but these are not what I would have used. Uh, we used to use, well, let me preface it first by saying when I was studying to be an actor, I went to American Academy at night, 
and worked in Abercrombie and Fitch in the daytime in the dogs department, see? And I'd talk to customers, and I'd be breaking a thing called a crackle bone. It's a rubber bone about this long with steel plates in it. Oh, I know. And I, I would stand and talk, yeah. see? Yeah. And when they asked me to do this wrestling, after I saw it the first night, I said, man, I can't play this straight. So I went and I bought the crackle bone for a buck. And then when they would grab a wrist like this, or a leg, I would break the bone into the oh. microphone. Oh! And we got oh. a, I would, I'm going to try this. You know, a lot of reporters said I was using walnuts. I never did. Never did this before. Let's see. Perfect. Does that sound like a bone yeah, bone? That sounds exactly. Twist, oh. your, twist oh. your own. Twist, oh. twist your own hair. Oh, oh here. Let, wait. I got it. Get it. <laughs> and that. Woo. I used all kinds of sound effects. We would, we would. No, I think I did it to the finger. No, no. <laughs> they would bend over. You know, yeah. the rest of it would bend over, and I would have a, a window shade. I don't know if this could the same effect. But as they bent over, I'd go, <laughs> 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 and I slide whistle. You ever see a slide whistle? Yeah. You go like this. When they would flip a guy over, I'd go down, and when he come back up on his feet, I would zip it back up. And then uh, sometimes we would do it in the summertime outdoors at Park Arena across from yeah. Yankee Stadium. And we had a crescent moon, and they'd be in what is called a body lock, one wrestler behind the other. And we'd shoot that, and with another camera, superimposed. Now we have four guys on the moon, and I would do a bobsled race. <laughs> <laughs> Those were fun days. Oh, and how we play waltz music, you know, while they were wrestling like the devil. Like the, waltz and so. <laughs> the wrestlers hated it. They really did. I did a picture called Mr. Universe, uh, and uh, Vince Edwards, we found him in a gymnasium, and he was the star was of ben it. Ben Casey. Ben Casey, Later. Yeah. And anyhow, uh, when they called me in to do the picture, none of the wrestlers would do it. So somebody said, we got Dennis James in the pictures. That's why we won't do it. Right? Because well, they didn't like me making fun of it. Well, you weren't ever threatened by those guys. Oh, yeah. Were you? <laughs> there was a guy named Tarzan Hewitt. And I used, I used to do... I used to Tarzan do, Hewitt? I used to do one whole wrestling match in spontaneous rhyme. And I said, look at the suet on Hewitt. Right? <laughs> that was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the next week when I went down in the dressing rooms, he grabbed me in a hammerlock. I'm back, I almost broke my knees. Don't you ever talk about how heavy I am. Well, I kept teasing him so much that Milton Berle invited me on his big Tuesday night show, because I was by that time getting very big in 1950. And he said, I want you to bring a wrestler, and I'll wrestle him. So I bring Hewitt. Now, remember, he was getting $50 a match when he was wrestling in the beginning. Now he was getting big money. For the Milton Berle show, I get him $1,500. I figured he's a buddy of mine, fortune right? In those oh, my days. God, a fortune in those days. Oof. So anyhow, he's out there, and I do the commentary of Milton Berle, and I say, and look at that suet on Hewitt. Um. He didn't think it was funny. He came right over there. I said, same thing. And on the air, he's got he, me down. He's got you on the show. I said, I got you this job. So I said, I don't care. Don't talk about my weight. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> And I was uh, a male singer on the show. Tell the audience about that show. It was Club 60. That was a good show. Sort of the forerunner of a lot of it, these, I it think. It really we had, was. We had a 35-piece orchestra, Joe Galicchio. Mike was the boy vocalist. And we had... <laughs> he really was. And we had uh, Jamie and the Mellow Larks. And a uh, guest star every day. Not a co-host, but a guest star from Hollywood every day. And we had a girl singer named and, Nancy uh, Wright. Nancy Wright. And another one called Barbara... The girl from Milwaukee. She was a weather girl, huh? I don't remember her. Good, Woody. Anyhow. <laughs> what a hit I'm going to make with well, Barbara. It was a great show. It was an hour every day in color, and those days in color, boy, that was very important to yeah. get. Barbara it, Becker. Barbara, Barbara Becker. Becker, yeah. And you remember when color came in, how how intensely hot the lights were? I'll never forget that. I mean, you could you could fry an egg on your desk. Let me tell you something to go back ago. The, the lights were hot in those days, but in the early days of television, they were like ten times hotter than that. Every one of these cameras had a bank of lights on the camera. And they made you wear brown or well, brown lipstick? Different colors. Colors because one would be red sensitive, one camera, yeah. and if you used red lipstick, it would all wash out. Another one would be blue sensitive, so we used to use brown lipstick. But brown lipstick, otherwise, any no now. lips at all. You know, <laughs> no lips at all. I just sit there and look like a. Yeah, but if you could have seen like old dummies. Michael on that Club 60 show, <laughs> Presley was just getting hot and he would do impersonation. Have you ever done it on your own show? Oh, do it? Have you? You had to bring that up. You do. You have done it. No, no, I've never done it. Though. Oh, do it for them sometime. No. Oh my. God. It's the, believe me, it's the funniest thing you'll ever see. What, that'll be so you today. Know, you, know why, you know why I really don't want to do that? Because mm -hmm. just recently we were up taping at Muhammad Ali's uh, camp before the fight. And of course, you know, he won the championship. And while there, the phone rang. Seriously, we were having lunch. And he got up and went over the phone and he, and he, he put the phone. I never know when he's serious. He said, 
somebody wants to talk to you. And I said, who is it? He said, Elvis. And I went, <laughs> and it was Elvis Presley. <laughs> and we talked about maybe coming on the show sometime. And if he sees me do that, that'll wrap that up. Oh, I'll you know. tell you, it's, it's a classic. Though, but let's do you? it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I know you brought a picture from Club 60. He's dying to show you this picture. Yeah, can we see it? Yeah, sure. How do we want to... All right. Now, that's the original cast. And you can see Mike back there behind Jamie, the boy. Now, wait to see this picture of him. This is the type of boy Michael, Dow, uh, Michael Douglas was. Here's the next picture. Now, this is as I know him. Are we ready to show that now? I think we have that one, too. Uh oh There it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Jamie Dina and Tommy Ham. They were married then, and right. they were with the Mellow Larks. And that was the usual me. That's the kind of thing I did a lot of in those days. <laughs> how, how many people know that, uh, that how many celebrities that you gave starts to, Dennis, when you had a show called Chance of a Lifetime? You really started a lot of people. Oh, yeah, because that show was on for a long time. And uh, Barbara McNair, there was a, and uh, Diane Carroll. Uh, Dick Van Dyke, he was a loser. He lost. Dick yeah. Van Dyke was a loser. He lost. So did Jonathan Winters lose. So did Barbara McNair. Mm -hmm. uh, Roger uh, Williams, his name was Lou Wirtz, you know, the yeah, autumn pianist. Found him a little place in Forest Hills, New York, playing piano in there. And at that time, all of our talent was professionals, you see, not amateurs, mm -hmm. that were in small clubs and never had television exposure. So they had the talent going. Did he win? Did Roger win? Oh, yeah. Oh, he won quite a bit. Yeah. For those who never saw it, tell about Chance of a Lifetime, the kind of show. Well, actually, it was professional talent getting an opportunity to be on television, and they would compete against one another in the early stages of now, the show. Now, this is before Arthur Godfrey did that talent oh, yeah, scout yeah, thing, so. yeah. And then we'd have a guest star come on, he'd tell how he had he has his chance of a lifetime. And at the end of the show, there would be one person, you know, that won it, and that person would carry over, get $1,000 a week's engagement at the Latin Quarter, picture contract, a record contract, and so on. Wow. And so it was, it was a big start. And Roger, as I say, Lou Wirtz, his name was, and Cap Records changed his name to Roger Williams, and they gave him autumn leaves, and he took off from there. Yeah. Well, we dug up that old kinescope, actually, of, of Chance of a Lifetime. And, really? And I want the audience to see this. This is your way of getting even? This is my way of getting oh. even, Dennis. Will you see Dennis in his oh, bar mitzvah suit? I can't suits. bear. I can't bear myself today. <laughs> I can't bear it then. <laughs> Seventy-one and a half, a brand new winner tonight, Gloria Van Dorn. Be a close one. Here we have for you the Broma Seltzer Chapel Tiffany. In here is one thousand dollars. Make the Broma Seltzer. We can get you a lot. No, do cry now. Need it. We can get you a Latin Quarter on Broadway. Then after that, we fly you out to Hollywood, California. Uh, you'll be out there in the Moulin Rouge. We'll go out by American Airlines. We spend a whole week out there. And I know that she is a joy. We've got to go now. So uh, uh, a nice hand for Danny Town. And we'll say so long for me. Danny, thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have a winner at home, do we? Nobody picked Gloria Van Dorp, so unfortunately no winner at home. But next week uh, will be the makers of Ron Freak's products. And if you missed the show last week, then you missed all our talk about Tweed Mist. Now, Tweed Mist is a special toilet water concentrate that's lighter than perfume, uh, stronger and more lasting than bouquet. And it comes in a very beautiful bottle with a nice golden top and a crystal bottle. And your finger controls everything. Just a touch of your finger and pressurized spray, and I'm telling you, you're living on top of the cloud. You are listening. I spray it all around the house, on the on the place, every place, all over the stage, hands, and the technician. We have the finest smelling show in television today. And if you want to smell right, then I say get Tweed Mist. You can't wait for it. You just a finger touch is all you need to write the exact amount from out. Now, this is the newest member of the Tweed family, and I'd like you to try it tomorrow. $2.25 plus tax for Tweed Mist, right? Go to your drug and apartment store, squirt it in the guy's face, smell him if you like it, buy it. Good night. See you all next week. Bye.
remember, did you remember afterwards that you had said, uh, spray it on the guy across the counter. If you like the way he smells, buy it. <laughs> did you remember saying that? Well, I, because all that live, I don't remember saying any of that stuff. Oh. But I, I used to do them to be cute, you know. And it wasn't very cute when you see it. I love it. Do we have a winner at home? <laughs> oh, nobody chose Gloria, so there's no winner at home. <laughs> it's so funny. You know I spent, did you ask me how long I was in the business? It took me 36 years to get here, and then you show that thing and destroy <laughs> everything. I like the voice. It was just a little higher. <laughs> <laughs> that, that always shakes you up when you hear yourself a few years ago. Did I ever talk like that? Do you like yourself on the air? No, I never watched. I, I swear I never watched the show. Can't stand. I looked at that thing, almost left. <laughs> <laughs> My next guest is... Came to get the girl. Is it physically possible to make someone happy once again by calling out a name? Let's try it, Dennis. Gilbert Renhard, come on down. Your next contestant on the Frankie Ray. telling you, only, the, only these things happen to me. I'm expecting a man to come. <laughs> Is your name really Gilbert? Yes. Well, that's very interesting. Why did you get a name? Where did you get a name Gilbert? In France. Beg your pardon? In France. In France. Oh, yes. is it is it pronounced Gilberte or just Gilberte? Gilberte. I see. Okay. John. Gilberte. Gilberte. Yes. No, uh, no, no. Gilberte. Gilbert. 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 We <laughs> we go to play the Price is Right. Okay. Here's the art of going up for bids. Look. It's a motorcycle. <laughs> It's the Kawasaki 175cc dual-purpose motorcycle for on- or off-road use. High-speed transmission for around town, weekend riding, furnished by Kawasaki. And this motorcycle can be yours if the price is right. Okay, now, Miss Gilbert, you have to give us a bid on that motorcycle. $800. Tyrone. $895. Alexandra. <laughs> Nine. Nine hundred. Nine hundred. Okay, now you, Sandra. Six fifty. Six fifty. Okay, the bids are in. Actual retail price is eight hundred and eighty-nine dollars. And do you know Gil Bear is just here? Gil Bear, come on, send her up. John. Now watch your step now, Gilberto. Don't you trip over these cables or anything. Just take your time. Up, up, up. You are a beautiful lady, I'll tell you. Now, you don't know nothing about price? I'll bet you win everything here today. Do you shop? No. Do you, you don't buy any groceries or anything at home? No. Just buy, well, buy for me. Your daughter buys for you. All right, now I'm going to try to explain to you very slowly, and I don't want to speak French because then everybody else won't understand. Do you understand? Okay. You're going to buy these items, but John has to tell you about them. So listen very carefully to Johnny Olson. Eskimo Pies, a six-pack of dairy fresh ice cream covered with special chocolate-flavored coating. Eskimo Pies, refreshing and delicious for a no-fuss treat. Wash and dry, moist disposable towelettes, individually foil wrapped to clean up anywhere. Put a pack in your pocket of wash and dry. Soft, chewy, delicious nibs and fun to eat flavors. Cherry, licorice, and assorted fruit nibs, the family favorite anytime. Blamo, the only sugarless bubble gum in big soft chunks and handy sticks. Delicious and doesn't sugarcoat teeth. And Hefty, makers of the right size plastic bags for every inside and outside use. Hefty, the strong plastic bag. All right, now what you're going to do, Gilbert, I hope you understand me, is you want to buy these items and you want to come to as close to $7 American and you, uh, that you can. If you come between $6.75 and $7, if you don't go over, but come between $6.75 and $7, then you could win this. Now you look, this is what you're going to win. A new car! <laughs> The options include swing out rear side windows, body side molding, door edge guards, wheel trim rings, steel belted radial white stripe tires, and rubber bumper strips. Furnished by Chevrolet. And if you win this car, you'll also receive 
33 quarts of Castrol GTX for performance you can feel. Castrol GTX, the all-season motor oil. And to keep it looking new, a car care assortment featuring Turtle Wax, the world's largest selling liquid car wax. Cleans, polishes, protects, and one easy operation. Turtle Wax with a hard shell finish. Dennis? All right, Gilbert, they're testing me is what they're doing. She says, I don't drive either. I don't shop, but I don't... <laughs> all right, now listen, Gilbert, but you're going to go, and you're going to work it out very well. Now, this girl over here is Janice. And Janice is going to keep track of everything you buy, and then she'll tell you on the cash register how much it is. And I'll tell you how much is left before you go over $7. Do you understand that so far? Okay. Now, what do you want to buy, and how many of them do you want to buy? You don't want to spend more than seven. Listen to the audience. They may help. You can, you're going to buy one of these items. One, I mean, one name of it, but you can take as many as you like. Somebody is saying 25-something. I don't know what they're saying to you. Uh, um, 45? 45 what? Of which one? Cents. Of this? Oh, no, you're saying it's 45 cents? No, is your daughter here? Yes. Daughter, will you come up here a minute, please? We've never done this before, but for the sake of saving the show, we've got to save the show. Hurry, sweetheart. Listen, I don't, I don't blame Jay for picking you because you're the prettiest girl we ever had on the show. But he really thought I could speak French. Can you help Mother? What is she going to buy? Tell her. Well, you, you tell her now. She wants to buy the candy. Yeah, how many of them now? Have you got a husband out there? <laughs> Have you got a sister? No, no, no. She wants to come between $6.75 and $7. And seven dollars. She doesn't want to go over. She can buy one of a kind, two of a kind. Doesn't have to do it all at once, you see. If you were shopping in a store, you don't want to spend more than seven dollars. What would you buy? Well, she wants Eskimo pie. How many ice? How many Eskimo pies? Eight. Eight. Eight Eskimo pies. Eskimo pies are seventy-nine cents. Eight comes to what? It comes to 632. Now you want to not go over seven. You have 68 cents. What, what's in there? Less than 68 cents. Give you 675 to seven. How many though? You want to come? Four. How many? Four of those candies. You only want to spend 68 cents. Mother is saying no, and she's the contestant. Two. I'm two. She says two. Okay, two. I go by the contestant. Okay, two of these candies right here. That's 15 cents. Two of those comes to what? What's the total now? 6.62. Now you got 38 cents left. If you spend 39, that's too much. But almost anything else is going to put you in the money. One, one, one. one at the wash and dry. One, mother says. 49 cents. How much is that now? No, nope, it went over by another. But we gave it a good try. Didn't we? Let's give them a big hand. They really tried. But stick around. You might be perfect. Watch your step now. Watch your step. We'll be right back. Thing. Oh, would you like to sing, Dennis? I can't sing a note. You know, I'm one of those attacks. You know, you're right. I can't. I really, I can't. I did a show called Name That Tune. And you could. And they asked me to sing. Right. I tell you, you know what flop sweat is. I got out there every day and I said, fellas, come on, I can't sing. Never could. That's when they changed the name of the show to Mame That Tune. <laughs> After he, they heard him That's singing beautiful. the songs. Hey, you know, I tell a story. Mame That Tune. Well, I tell a story about this guy and myself. Okay. He may not remember, but I remember it. Okay. We worked in Jersey. I worked for a guy named Paul Lesteo, that you remember. And Paul Estale called me down one day because my name was Demi James Sposer. And he says, change your name or you're fired. And I changed it fast to Dennis James. I said, what about Sinatra? He said, he's got talent. <laughs> right? He never changed it. Never changed his name. It's a true story. So I could, he got See how talent. wrong he was? No, oh, boy. No. If I, I had once your... had a, uh, an agent when I was a kid uh, try to convince me to change my name. Well, they usually do that anyway. You know, they want to make it simplified. And I said, no, no, no. I said, it's, uh, it just remains that way. You want to call me Tom Sinatra? Fine, but don't change the last name. <laughs> Irving Sinatra? Wilbur Sinatra. You know, I think that you were one of the first, though, that, that maintained, uh, that kept his name. I don't think anybody else before you Oh, there were that. several people, but I, I thought that, uh, first of all, my family name is an uncommon Italian name, and it's a pretty name. I really believe it's a pretty name. Uh, I don't know why Dean changed his name. Corsetti is a beautiful name. Yes. You know. Of course, Russ Colombo, he stayed with Russ Colombo. Russ Colombo is a pretty name. Yeah. Beautiful name. They're very musical. Uh, 
But see, I had a name called Demi, and the kids were calling me Dummy Demi. Dummy, when I was Demi, Demi, a fighter, you know. Yes. Demi, what is Demi, Demi. For? Actually, it's uh, short for Demetrio. Demetrio, oh, see. Si. My father's name is Demetrio. See. Si. Demetrio Demi. Sports. That's George, he knows. He's another Greek over here. He's si. Italian, too, you know. He's Italian, Italian too. Yeah. Everybody, the world is Italian. <laughs> when you're in love. 80% of that orchestra is Italian. Right. Okay. <laughs> now, let's hear from all the Italians to send her the dollar apiece. Right. We've asked the Listen, Sons of Italy. Major call, pick up your phone, and do it right now as we get ready to do another number for you. Listen, uh, let me ask you a question. Yes. Uh, 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 Dan, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm ignorant about this. What, how much of an area does the, this, this uh, particular chapter of Silver Palsy we take care of? We actually go... L.A. County? L.A. County and Orange County. Two counties. Yeah, and the monies that were raised, 75 cents on every dollar stays right here. 25 cents from every dollar goes to the national, and that goes I into see. the research. And that little guy I just introduced you to yeah. was a two-month-old two preemie, premature yeah. baby. Yeah. He would have had cerebral palsy, had five contributing factors to cerebral palsy. But because of those 25 cents on the dollars through the years, what they learned in the research... They benefited by it. He, uh, we benefited by it. Otherwise, they told us that he would have been cerebral palsy if they didn't learn what they learned. And he's a perfectly normal youngster. He doesn't know the national anthem, but he's a perfectly normal youngster. Yeah. Neither does Robert Goulet. No. <laughs> or Victor Moan or Johnny Desmond. <laughs> or me. Oh, I was just going to say, if you didn't include yourself, I was about to say, ladies and gentlemen, is Frank Sinatra to sing the national anthem? No. You wouldn't dare, and I'm not going to ask Listen, you to. Listen, I'm going to have to leave you now. Yeah. I just want to tell you that... Uh... Well, let me see the total once more. Let me see the total once more before Frank leaves. Two hundred ninety-four thousand. Oh. Will you do me a favor? Don't need five thousand. Leave at three hundred. Oh. Contribution to Palsy, Post Office Box 2661, Terminal Annex. You going to do another number for us? Yeah, I'm going to do a special number here because Good. I think that it's worthy because of the day that it is today. And uh, this week we should, uh, we should dedicate to all of the fellas in the land. All right? Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day, all you fathers. <laughs> Happy Father's Day to you. And to me, and to him, and everybody. One other thing about this telethon you have to know before you leave, oh, Frank. One thing you have to know about this telethon before you leave, why I'm anxious for that 300,000 figure. It was released, and Mayor Bradley came last night and gave me a proclamation that I did 107 telethons, and of those telethons, $49,700,000 was raised. And if it went to 300000 this year, that would make me the $50 million man, right? Mm -hmm. I asked Lee Majors to come over, the $6 million man. I want him standing here when it goes to the $50 million man. Come on, Lee. Yeah. I'm really sorry I didn't get up to the tournament. That's all right. Thank you. Is it now Richard Anderson? Dick was here for many, many hours. Did you get my message over the telethon, uh, television, um, or did Dick call you at home? I uh, actually, uh, I heard it. Yeah. I got, I got the message. I'm sorry, I got here a little late. No, you're gonna be just right and, because uh, once it goes to three hundred thousand, then you got yourself a fifty million dollar man on your hands. Listen, uh, you put a new leg on him to get him over here. <laughs> Hey, have you ever had a blowout at 80? <laughs> <laughs> All of them? <laughs> I drank a can of STP and right on over here. Oh, Let us know, or else just give a signal to Joe, because when it gets to 300, Frank has to run out of here, and I'm going to stomp on the $6 million man. <laughs> you're going biotic, a stomp on him. Oh, oh. you go what? Yeah, I'm going to stomp on him. Biotics or no biotics? Because we play, we, what? Brand new total ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. All right, it's back here. Well, if there's anything over 300,000... Oh, no!
Stephanie's got a huddle going on over there. Uh. Listen now, hey, six million dollar man. <laughs> now, if we go to at least $311,000, anything above there, this telethon will be bigger than any other telethon before it. Well, that's a hard act to follow, Mr. Sinatra. And I think that's fantastic that a man of his stature, he's the real six million dollar man. Him as a performer. No, he's but a... for him to show up and give us what little time you've had here, How that's much time fantastic. we got left? We've got exactly uh, 34 and a half minutes, 34 and 45 seconds. And we've got to make uh, at least 11,000. We'll do that if they just pick up the phones and call.